Example one, finding the mean, median and mode. Nine people take a test, their scores out of 100 are, and then the list there, work out the mean, median and mode of their scores. I'm going to start off by working out the mean. So to do that, I'm going to add everything up. So I'm going to do 56 plus 79 plus 77 and so on until I've added all of the list up. And then that equals 660. Then I need to divide by how many numbers there are. Two ways of figuring this out. Well, either you can count up how many there are or this question actually tells you nine people take a test. So now we can do 660 divided by nine, which will get you 73.3 to one decimal place. So the average score, the mean score in the test was 73.3 out of 100. Next, the median. So this was the this was the mean. Next, the median. First of which we need to put it in order. So either increasing or decreasing, it doesn't matter as long as they're in some sort of order. So doing that, we end up with this list. We get 48, 56, 68, 71, and so on. And then from there, you need to find the middle number. So we can cross off from either side. So one, 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 one and keep going. And then eventually we end up with one number on its own in the middle. So the median is 77 in this case. Finally, the mode. That's easiest to find from our ordered list because remember the mode is the one that is the most common so there has to be more than one appearance of it in the list. Looking through there's only 148, only 156, only 168 and so on until you get to 79 where you'll notice there's two of them whereas everything else is only one of it so the mode must be 79. Example 2, calculating the range. Find the range of and then we've got a list of numbers. So we need to figure out what the biggest number is and what the smallest number is. So first let's find the smallest. Well, 12, and then we have the number eight straight after. So eight's clearly smaller. So eight's our smallest so far. Four is smaller than that, so that's our smallest. And then we can keep going through. 16 is bigger, 15 is bigger, 15 is bigger, five is bigger, 15 is bigger, 10 is bigger, eight is bigger. So our smallest must be four. Now we need to find the largest. Follow a similar process, so we'll start with 12, 8 smaller, so we're still at 12, 4 smaller, so we'll stay with 12 again, 16 bigger, so that's now our largest, 15 smaller, 15 smaller, 5 smaller, 15 smaller, 10 smaller, 8 smaller, so our largest must be the 16. From there, we just need to subtract the 2, so we're going to do 16, take away 4, which gives us 12, and that is our range. Example three, finding the mean on applied questions. There were five members of a basketball team who had a mean point score of 12 points each per game. One of the team members left, causing the mean point score to reduce to 10 points each per game. What was the mean score of the player that left? So we're going to work backwards. Remember, when we normally calculate the mean, we find the total number of points, divide by how many items there were, or in this case, how many players there were, and that gives us the mean. Working backwards... We know how many players there were, we know the mean, so we want to work out the total number of points. So working backwards, we're going to do 12 times by 5, because that was the original mean, and there was 5 members, so that's 60 points as a group of 5. Okay. Next, we want to find the total once the mean has changed. So the same process, we know that the mean is now 10, but one member is left, so there's only 4 of them. So we're going to do 10 times 4. That's 40. And then the difference between these two is the person that is left. So 60 take away 40 is 20. So what was the mean score of the player that left? 20 points per game. Example 4. Comparing two data sets. 
Two maths teachers are comparing how their year nine classes performed in the end of year exams. The results are as follows. So you can see we've got a list for class A and then a list for class B. Give three comparisons between the results of these two maths classes. So thinking about averages, the first thing I'm gonna start with is the mean of each class. So for class A, remember the mean, you sum all of the numbers and then divide by how many numbers there are. So for class A, that's 76 plus 35 plus 47 plus 64, plus 95, plus 66, plus 89, plus 36, plus 84. And then how many numbers there are? Well, we're not actually told, so we'll have to quickly add it up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we're dividing by 9. So in this case, if you put this into your calculator, you'll get 65.7 recurring. So if we want to give it to one decimal place, we could say 65.8, but we should be okay leaving it like that for now. B, well, again, we're just going to sum all of class B's scores. So we're going to have 51 plus 56 plus 84 and so on. And again, in this case, that there's nine students. If you need to double check, you can just count how many students there are in this list or how many scores there are, I suppose. Putting this into your calculator, you'll get 62.1 recurring. So what conclusion can we make here? Class A has a higher mean, therefore potentially perform better on average. The next thing we can do to compare the two is have a look at the medians. So for class A, the first thing we really need to do is put them in order. So that's 35, 36, Eighty nine and ninety five. Then you just need to find the middle number. So you can do that by ticking off one from each end and working your way into the middle. So just like this. That leaves us with sixty six. So the median of class A is sixty six. We can do the same thing for B. So first of all, putting them in order. And again, try and find the middle number. That leaves us with 60. So you can see here the median of class A is also higher. So now we have the mean and the median are higher for class A. So I would be pretty confident in saying that class A performed better on average. So, so far we've made two comparisons. The question asks for three. The third comparison I'm gonna make are the ranges. So for class A, Remember, the range is the biggest takeaway, the smallest. So the easiest way to spot this is from the ordered list that we did for the median. So for class A, that was 95 as the biggest and 35 as the smallest. So 95 take away 35, that's a range of 60. For class B, the biggest was 84 and the smallest was 50. So that's 84 take away 50, so 34. So Remember, a range is a measure of spread. What that means is class A, the students were very varied. So you've got some students who performed really well, some students who performed not so well. Whereas class B, they're a little bit closer to each other, so a little bit more similar in performance in the exam. But overall, in terms of how well the class did, A was better on average and B was slightly worse on average. If you found this video useful, why not try the topic exam on our learning platform? Here, you can answer a series of questions and get instant feedback on how you've done. So you can see here a written solution explaining how you should have done it. So if you've got it correct, you can just quickly check you did it the right way. Or if you're still unsure how you should have solved it, there's a video solution where an expert will talk you through exactly how to solve the problem.